Hi guys, I'm Dave. Welcome to Beer Virtually. Today we have a beer from Founders. This is Founders Backwoods Bastard. Um, so this is another uh, bourbon barrel aged. This is a Scotch ale. Um, everything from Founders is pretty good. They're one of those breweries that pretty much everything they put out is is very high quality, very tasty. They take a lot of pride in what they do, or it seems to. Oh, that smells very oaky right off the bat. It pours like a Scotch ale. It's a little lighter than a stout or an imperial stout or a porter. You can see through it, it's got a and brownish amber um, color. Oh man, that smell is fantastic. It smells like uh, outdoorsy and um, so 11% ABV on this and uh, an IBU of 50. First sip. Oh, that is good. Right off the bat, a lot of oak up front, almost a hint of honey. Definitely a, a honey note throughout the whole thing. Um, and it kind of lingers in your mouth for a little bit. Almost no head to speak of. This is the 2017 bottling. And as of, I believe, April 2018, this will be a year-round release instead of a, um, it used to be like a three, four month release. Now it's going to be a year-round release. So they, uh, Founders has a lot of beers in, in a barrel. So their barrel, barrel program is pretty extensive. Um, this is not cheap. This is, um, $16.99 for a four pack. I think this might be worth $16.99 for a four pack. Uh, the last beer I reviewed was the, um, what was it? The Dogfish Head uh, Syracuse Nera. And I don't think that was worth the money. For the same price, this, this, is, this is worth it, I would say. You get a very, that musty oak. Definitely some honey notes. So I wanted to make sure I drank this one at a warm enough temperature to get all the flavors. So I got the Thermopen out. And this is at 54 degrees, which is probably perfect from my experience in the past. Um, 54 is probably where it's the, where the fullest. I always like little cool things. So this is the founder's lid. And on the inside of the, the, the bottle cap, it says about barrel aged. Kind of cool little, and it's got to put, you know, kind of the end of a barrel. This is consistent with Founders labeling. Pretty simple, very similar to the Dogfish Head labels, actually. Um, simple paper labels. This has a thin, either metallic ink or, or uh, uh, red foil around the label with an old guy on there from, you know, the hills or something like that. On the back, it just says 2017 release. Expect lively, warm smells of single malt scotch, oaky bourbon barrels, smoke, sweet caramel, and roasted malts, and a bit of earthy spice, and a scintilla of dark fruit. It's a kickback sipper made to excite the palate. I don't know if I get all of that. I'm real surprised how much honey flavor I'm getting. Maybe some raisins. You know, it might, might be a, a slight raisin flavor. But definitely very oaky. And it, the scotch ales are almost along the lines of... Uh, the Bourbon County barley wine, as far as as far as this Scotch ale, the being that it's bourbon aged, 
and that was also bourbon barrel aged. Um, they're both, uh, the barley wine is actually an ale, I believe, and this is an ale. There are actually some similarities between them. They both have that musty, oaky flavor, almost like, like, like you're drinking a beer in an old shed or something like that. It's weird, it's like, when you smell it, it, just, it smells like old, like an old house, like old musty house. But not, but it, that translates to a pretty enjoyable flavor, surprisingly. Almost no lacing. I mean, a little bit of, I mean, nothing to really speak of. It's barely clinging to the glass. And you can see the color now. It's a, almost like a dark apple juice, maybe? I, I'm trying to get a, a gauge for the color. I'm curious what the, where this one would fall on the SRM scale, which is the, uh, the scale for color. Pour the rest of this in here. Well, I'm pretty excited about having three more of these in the fridge. Um, some of these beers I've, I review, um, I've had before. Um, a lot of them I have not. A lot of them, the first time I'm trying them is here on camera. And I think that um, each of those approaches has their pluses and minuses. I think by doing it this way, you guys are getting uh, a more raw approach to, to what I'm tasting. On the flip side, if I've had it before, I may be able to speak more intelligently about it if you know I've already experienced those flavors. Then I also have another data point to reference. If I said last time I had it, it was more boozy, and this time it's cleaner, or, you know, whatever the case. But this is really good. I like Scotch ales in general. I don't know if you guys have ever had Tenants. Tenants is a Scotch ale, and that's that's pretty good. But barrel aging this. I'm not sure how long this barrel aged for, but I had a guess I would say a while based on the complexity. American Oak does a number of amazing things for alcoholic beverages, whether it's beer, bourbon, wine. I mean, aging in oak is, uh, oak's a great flavor and, and leads to all sorts of complexities and nuances and other flavors that come out as a result of uh, oak. So in a bourbon barrel, the barrel's been charred. So there, you definitely have some of that char. I wonder how much that influences the color. I mean, it's already been, so in bourbon, when they, when they barrel age bourbon, it goes in clear and it comes out a little lighter than this. Um, I wonder if that char is already kind of used up on the bourbon and, or, or it'd be really interesting to see the SRM, SRM difference from the beer going into the barrel to the beer coming out of the barrel. Maybe I'll email one of these companies and get that info and I can report back to you. Um, I'm, I'm kind of interested. But th this is really good. This is above a four for me. Um... I'm gonna go four and a quarter. It's really close to a four and a half, but I can't quite give it a four and a half. Um, the finish is a little disjointed. It, when you first taste it, all the flavors kind of come together, and then they kind of just scatter in your mouth as, as the finish happens. It's a weird sensation. And that's why I'm not gonna give it a four and a half, but definitely a four and a quarter. honey flavors it's wild I don't know just what I'm picking up or I, I'd be really curious in the comments to see if other people get a honey flavor from this beer like I said this is a 2017 release and barrel aging from barrel to barrel can be very different a lot of times they, they try to taste different barrels and if you have a strong barrel they'll try to spread it around uh, spread it you know amongst other barrels to, to blend it um, I'm not sure how much of that they do with beer I know with bourbon they definitely go for a, a, a kind of a fixed flavor profile unless you're getting single barrel bourbon or small batch then a lot of times you 
bottle to bottle can be different. Very good. I, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. That went pretty quickly also. The color's honey-ish also. It almost looks like... Like... Not tea, but... Almost. So there's just a little bit left here. Let's see what the temperature is now. It's only 56 degrees with that time with the last sip left. It's only 56 degrees. This was, I'm glad I, I let it sit as long as I did. 54, I think, was the perfect temperature to drink this beer. Um, I've experimented quite a bit with different temperatures, and 52 to 54 is a good range to drink a beer. Well, last sip. That was great. I got a bunch of more cool stuff in the fridge. If you guys enjoyed this episode, I hope you consider subscribing. Until next time, cheers.